In communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsel, Yaibarom. Alright. Honey, did you remind him that the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions? Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer? to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? Baluo? What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. of owning your dream homes. EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story building three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads covered yeah. drainage. Um, first, we have the inaugural meeting of the executives of the Gambia Bar Association, which was held on the 3rd of June, 2006, at the office of Ami Ben Suda and Associates. This is the meeting that um, dealt with the issue of uh, Mrs. Denton. The minutes of the meeting, I'd like to exhibit it as Exhibit 217A. Okay. I'll also like to exhibit the <coughs> ruling of the High Court in the case of Ajam Mariam Denton, um, in which the judge held that her detention was unlawful and ordered for her immediate release from detention. And the uh, ruling was delivered on the 10th of July. No. It was delivered on the 24th of July, 2006. That will be Exhibit 217B. 217B. I also have uh, the letter addressed to the Honorable Attorney General, dated on the 9th of August, 2006. This is uh, the letter pertaining to the conduct of the State Council, Emmanuel Fakbele in the case of Aja Mariam Denton. That, is, that should be Exhibit 217C. And... Um, but that's not the letter that was addressed to the AG in a different capacity, not his AG capacity. It was in her capacity as AG, or in his capacity as AG. 
because I don't know whether okay. it was a... Okay, but there, was, there was one that witness referred to that was written to him as his, uh, as, uh, I think, in a capacity uh, head of the, or nominal head of, uh, of uh, the Bar Association. Wasn't that, no. I think that was the terminology that the witness used. No, um, I believe uh, the witness was trying to explain the role of the AG as the nominal, as a nominal uh, member, or is it head of the bar? With your permission, may I just clarify Please, that? please, go, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, basically, it was, um, the letter was addressed to the Attorney General, I mean, I mean, as indicated in the header. But also, we reminded the Attorney General of his nominal role as leader of the bar. Uh, letter tra traditionally, Attorney Generals are leaders of the bar. I mean, that's the honor the, the letter was not addressed to him in that capacity. No, no the letter was addressed to him as Attorney General. Bon, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Then we have um, <coughs> the report prepared by uh, the International Bar Association. Um, and the report is titled Under Pressure, a report on the rule of law in the Gambia. Um, I had made reference to certain uh, issues highlighted in the report, and I believe lead counsel also did uh, when he was uh, examining the last witness. That should be Exhibit 217D. Uh, Mr. Witness, if we may proceed. Um, uh, but before that, let me just um, okay. So the, uh, all four requests are granted. Oh, just my apologies, yes, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> thank you very much for okay. that. Okay, thank you. Yes. With the permission of the chair, perhaps it might be also an opportune moment to to exhibit the order closing the supermarket in the, in the matter relating to Mary Samba as well as the newspaper article. If I may have all of that as yeah. well. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have with me the order of the High Court. Uh, the order was made by Justice B.Y. Kamara on the 24th of November 2003. And uh, this was made with respect to Harry's uh, supermarket. And it, it was an order made to reopen uh, the supermarket That should be Exhibit um, 217E. Okay. And there is this newspaper report which is not quite clear. Um, I will look for a clearer version of the paper and later tender it in as um, Exhibit B. We already have some of the volumes uh, of point newspaper. Yeah. So we'll just make reference to it. It's a newspaper dated um, Monday, um, it dated December 1st, 2003. Point newspaper. Right. <coughs> and uh, yeah. that should be exhibit 217F. And uh, on uh, 217E, as in Edward, that was the order? That was that the order of the court ordering uh, the supermarket, Harry supermarket, to be open. And uh, after an executive order was made that this, they should cease uh, business. Yeah. And witness did refer to that in his Yes, testimony. witness referred to the incident involving a uh, Council Mary Samba Christensen. Fine. Thank you. Uh, request granted, Council. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
Council, as we were discussing before the break, um, we discussed uh, the issue involving uh, Moses Richards. A letter that uh, was written by the JS. Yes. Yes. Judicial Secretary. Judicial Secretary Mokobindon. And um, the executive was copied in the letter. And which subsequently led to Moses Richards being uh, arrested and detained at mile two on charges of giving false information. You mentioned that the bar met to address the issue of Moses Richards. And uh, the bar had planned to hold a protest. And several letters were written to inform the courts that um, a protest, the bar was not going to sit for three days, that is. Uh, Council, if I may have uh, the letters that were written with respect to Moses Richard so that I can make reference to it. Thank you. I have with me a letter dated 10th of uh, January 2011. And that was the protest action on uh, the persecution of uh, Moses Richards. Signed by the president of the bar at that time. And the letter reads, by a resolution passed by the general body of the Gambia Bar Association on the 10th of January 2011, it is decided that all legal practitioners licensed to practice in the Gambia will not appear in any court for three days from 2 p.m. today. Lawyers will return to court on Thursday, the 13th of January 2011. And the letter continues with all the things as well. And the letter mentioned that this is a protest action. This protest action is necessitated by the unjustified prosecution of Moses B.J. Richards. And the continued failure by the state to withdraw the charges against him. At this stage of writing this letter, was the persecution of Moses Richards ongoing at that point? Yes, uh, because one of the um, things we asked for was for the state to discontinue his um, prosecution, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, did your protest letter to the High Court, they did yield any results? Well, not really. Uh, did it? Not really, because um, I think eventually um, the charges were dropped um, with the intervention of counsel 
Ida Drame, um, who appealed directly to the president, I'm informed. That's the negotiation that you were referring to earlier in your um, testimony. Well, not, not necessarily. I think um, somehow uh, uh, a council either drama was perceived as, um, um, as, in, as more independent than the rest of us. And um, I guess, um, I mean, as, as a member, I mean, as a legal practitioner, she took it upon herself to um, help in ensuring the release of Moses Richards. And she was able to do it, and for us, we were happy that it was done. And also, this letter, the first letter was dated, is dated um, 10th January 2011. <coughs> it was actually preceded by um, another letter which is dated on the 7th of January 2011. And this letter is addressed to the master of the High Court in protest of the prosecution of Moses Richards. I have another letter that you referred to earlier as well. And um, that is dated the 10th of January. January, And um, it is addressed to the president of the Gambia Bar Association. This was actually a letter written by the Minister of Justice. I have not seen a letter that uh, was sent to him. Is there any such letter that was sent to him prior to the president of the bar receiving uh, this response from the Minister of Justice? Can I have a look at that letter, if you don't mind? There is one dated the 10th of January. Okay, there is, there is this other one uh, written by the president of the bar, sorry. It is dated the 13th of January 2011, where the points in that other letter were emphasized. I, well, from the, I believe there was a letter dated the 4th of January 2011. Yeah, can I have a letter from the 4th of January 2011? by the then ages letter. Uh, the, the fourth line reads, your letter of, your letter of 4th January reference XXX. It's a letter the attention of the government. So I presume that we had, a letter, we had sent a letter on the 4th of January. Yeah. And he, he, had, he responded to the letter on the 10th of January. Stating uh, his, the letter of January. January. I, I, I have to dig up the files to find that letter, which I can give to you as well. Well, I believe our, our follow-up letter reiterates some of those concerns. Indeed. Um, the 
letter, the response letter to the Chief Justice. Letter being turned to Chief Justice. Actually, it was Attorney General. Sorry, that was the Attorney General. Ansel, can you help us a little bit on uh, the three letters? Would the sender uh, is on each one and the, the addressee? Indeed, and, uh, Mr. Chairman, some, we only two or three letters were. We have uh, one missing letter that is not before me. I think uh, probably in their files, yeah. and that that's uh, the letter that the bar wrote to the Attorney General. Okay. with but respect yeah. to the prosecution of uh, Moses Richards. And subsequent to that letter, the Honorable Attorney General responded to... But that's the one that is uh, Le 13 uh, Janvier? Or, uh, uh, oh, no, Mr. Chairman, you're, you're confusing sorry, sorry. me right now with the French. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, the 13th of January. Letter is the one from the AG. Yes, the 13th of January is the one from the AG. And the 10th? And the 10th also is from the Attorney General. Um, so, sorry, the 13th is the one from the bar. The, oh, the 13th, sorry. is No, the 10th is actually... The AG. Confusion. So I, 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 that's why I wanted you to clear it. I'm a bit confused. Yes, the... The 13th is from the Honorable AG to the President of the Bar. The 10th is from the President of the Bar. To the? No, from the AG to the President of the Bar. The 10th is from the AG to the President of the Bar. The 13th is from the President of the Bar to the AG. Thank you. And then we have another letter that they wrote to the Master of the High Court. And another, actually two letters to the Master of the High Court, dated the 7th and the 10th. So master of the High Court, Master of the Rolls? <laughs> well, equivalent, yes. The master, master of the high, yeah, master of the high court. Master is basically responsible for no, I know. the administration of the. He's not master of the roles. No, no equivalent master of, the of that in England. And that Wales. is the Royal Court of Justice. Okay. <laughs> Looking at the content of the letter dated the tenth of uh, January, twenty eleven. Uh, the letter was writ actually written to the Honorable Chief Justice. And the Chief Justice brought it to the attention of the government, um, that is uh, the Attorney General, the representative of the government. Chief Justice, already told us uh, the climates under which uh, these letters were written. And also informed us about the response of the Attorney General. How did you feel when the Attorney General um, gave a, such a sharp response to the bar? Um, I, would, I would like to draw your attention to the last paragraph of, of this letter. That is the letter dated 10th January 2011. Addressed to the President of the Gambia Bar Association. Who at the time was Sheriff Mari Tambedu? Jamano Junior, Sheriff Mari Tambedu Law. With permission of the Chair, I would like to read the last paragraph of this letter. Chindigali Chair, Amanda Mubuga, Janganak letter, Billy Mujiechi Mom. Reads Lingwah Moy. Government, government, government. Ngurgi. Ebai reiterates. Di Besaladwal Digaratal. 
whoever interferes with. Uh, or disrupts Wala, Kajamal. the functioning of any public institution or office uh, lu jëm ci si liggéey yi benn buntu liggéey kay shall be dealt with according to law uh, danañ jëflanté yow comme ni nga xamé non la ko loi tédalé we believe that was threatening language ya gom nañ lu dé ay waxi tikku la because in essence dek euh mbir mi moy moses richard did not break any law was detained unlawfully. And all we did was bring this to the attention of the Attorney General at the time. And we raised our reservations to the judiciary in taking something that is really internal to the executive uh, only to receive a lecture uh, um, telling us that we, we basically cannot complain about the issue uh, and that that um, in fact if you complain uh, I mean, we, we can be perceived as interfering with the law. Essentially, it was turned around. And um, I mean, these are the kind of things that happen. I mean, you see, the, the, the facts are very clear. Very clear. I mean, this lawyer did not break the law. Lina modern lawyer am katun ben lawa. Yet, and we complained about it. Ete tawat na inko ite men nak. And the leader of the bar, who's a lawyer, turns it around and makes it seem like we're undermining um, the government. Let me read you another paragraph, paragraph 6. The government has a constitutional responsibility Protect all public institutions and offices and ensure that they are not undermined and destabilized by any person or group of persons for any reason. The undertone. I mean, we, we, the victim here is a lawyer and the bar. Uh, I have an age you're talking about undermining, uh, destabilizing. I mean, these are threatening languages. And um, well, we took you from that. I'll take you to uh, paragraph 3 of the said letter. paragraph 3. Can you kindly read that bit? It is not correct uh, any person or group of persons who think that they have power of disciplinary control over the Chief Justice or any public officer. This apart from being unconstitutional certainly will trivialize uh, compromise uh, and weaken the headship of an arm of government uh, and invariably the whole institution. The government will not allow that. Here is the government accusing you, the bar, of trying to use uh, unconstitutional means, they call it here. Said it's unconstitutional. And it's, it says that um, it compromises and weakens the headship of an arm of government. And uh, for this case, in reverse, it is actually the government that is 
using the judiciary ci ko lolu nak ute ak lolu ngur gi sax ñom ci sen bop ño ri jafé bunté atté bi to persecute a lawyer pour ñu daan ki nga xamné modi lawyer yobu ko court how did how did the members of the bar feel when they how did they feel at that point when they read this letter jamono joju nak ñi nga xamné ñoy mbotaay lawyer yi luñu yek biñ jangé letter bu melni they were threatened muy melni dañ len xupa accused of doing something that is unlawful tu ma len ne dañ def lo xamne andu tak loi and basically they were painted as enemies of the state manam dal dañ wone ne ñoñu ay noni rew mi len i mean we were very disappointed am nañ betel lol and i'm appalled nakal that such a letter would come from a from attorney general eh ne letter bu melno dana joge ko ci attorney general bi who is nominally the leader of the bar ki nga xamne dal ci adam mom moy njiti ba bi ought to know better eh te warna gëna xam cause i mean this is typical oppressive behavior eh ndax nak nek na mbir mo xamne nak mbir notel bu mag la turn it around eh tourner everything that he accused us of or doing is exactly what they did ñom liñ def lool lañ mujjé tourner tout mal ñuko ñun uh the bar never sought to um exercise any disciplinary powers over the chief justice ah uh, ba bi nak nekuton di xëñtu dara lo xamné mu ngi jëm ci walli ñu ñoy sayto chief justice bi we know that power is vested um uh, i mean on the on the jsc on the constitution we are very much aware of that xamné nek ne ci loi rew mi dal dina ñu rang doole ci ko chief justice bi merely express our dismay and disappointment uh dafa indi rek suñ mbettel over the behavior of the chief justice lu jëm ci walli jëf ji nga xamné non la chief justice bi jëfé and ask for his resignation eh ñu de laccé téme nak pour mu mëna jébalé place am we didn't try to force his resignation eh forcé wu ñi téme pour na mu wacc place am we ask him as a man of conscience eh dañ ko wax rek ni nit ko xamné ko andax kelam la resign eh pour na mu jébalé place am because as far as we are concerned uh, ndek nak li nga xamne ni soxal nañu lost the legitimacy uh, ñak na nak li nga xamne ni moy goram expected of the hold of that seat and office uh, dal dewal nañu sentu nak mu fessa place bobu nga xamne ni moy togumba obviously these type of people ya yeah, kon nak façon nit ñi have the capacity to understand that language uh, am nañu kaatan nak uh, pour mëna xam nak uh, cadeau yoyu And secondly there was nothing unconstitutional about asking for the resignation of any public officer ah te temen amul lenen lo xamne ni depu tak yon pour nak di saku ci wali wacc place ak kenn ko xamne mu ngi liggey ci ngour gi we didn't try to use force e force wuñ ko we didn't try to force ah te temen na coupe wuñ doole may i ask for for resignation this is normal in democracy da ñu nak pour mu wacc baye place am rek lañ doon laccé ne lu nan jaadu nana ci democracy as you can see um, their response is typical they take gis nga seen tontu nak ni mel and uh, they made it very clear that i mean they will not allow that i uh, don't know what that is, that means here but anyway eh dañ ko leral ni dal ñom min dolu lan la min lol min nak i'm not so sure whether they read our letter or they were just imagining um, things that we didn't say eh leru man da jang nañ suñ letter ndax xeyne tamé ñu ngi wax rek li nga xamné ni li ñom li ñu tollale rek and the bar responded uh, to the letter of the attorney general on the 13th of uh, january 2011 lawyer yi nak tontu nañ letter attorney general bobu fukki fana ñetta wéru january 2011 and uh, the bar emphasized their stance in this case in the case of moses richards the lawyer yi nak ñu ngi gëna dégeral seen taxaway ci mbiri moses richards and it also pushed for the chief justice ci ñu ngi pousse pour ki nga xamne modi chief justice pour to resign as well je balé ma xamam how did the attorney general react to this uh, letter of response from the bar attorney general nak mom naka la jele letter ba nga xamne lawyer yi ñoko ko tontu um i do not recall us having any further exchange on this issue 
fatale ko mana fen fo xamne ni am nañ ci ay dagat ne gannaaw li ci mbir mi my memory serves me right i believe um the 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 uh the chief justice resigned according to his version ah ci ma fatale ko da xene chief justice bi baye djegbalé na place am and other version um on, was that he was um dismissed i think the iba report actually did speak to that lenen lima xam dal moy ne dal mujje gi temen dak nañ ko who was the chief justice uh, during this period kan moy won chief justice jamano bobu i think it was brobby ya kana brobby dal might be brobby i'm not sure I'm, um i actually i'm not sure i'm not sure Already in uh, 2006 there was a heightened pressure from the bar for the resignation of the chief justice with respect to uh the case the cases involving uh justice Paul as you had um, earlier t stated mere chief justice comme ni ko feñale nonu um mr chairman at this point i'll just like to uh, put in uh, the following exhibits before i proceed with uh, the witnesses testimony that is um the letter from from the Gambia Bar Association to the Master of the High Court, dated uh, 7th January 2011, as Exhibit 217G. The second letter to the Master of the High Court, dated 10th January, 2011 as exhibit 217 h the letter of response from the attorney general at that time um edu e gomez dated um 10th of January 2011 as 217 I and the letter addressed to the Attorney General Ed E. Gomez by the President of the Bar dated 13th January 2011 as Exhibit 217 J. You've told this commission that um, uh, after the intervention of uh, Council Drame, well, Moses Richards was released by the executive. Well, Sorry, by the government. Just, just before that, um, uh, witness and counsel uh, is at the end of the list. I'm not sure I now. Confirm that um, the my apologies, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I <laughs> yeah, I thought you were. <laughs> yes, yes, my apologies. Okay. That's all requested. for me. So these ones are also uh, granted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Council, if we may, uh, sorry, witness, if we may proceed. Um, I, I believe. Um, I mean, he was he was granted bail, so he was no longer um, at mile two. But the, uh, charges, the charges were dropped, I believe. Uh, uh, then uh, John Bill, following the intervention of uh, Miss Ida Drame. Nekatut mile two, two ma yep dal dinay ko ni lawyer Ida Drame dugal nasi la menyam. We'll move on to the incident uh, involving uh, Mrs. Ami Ben Suda. If you can tell us about that. Negi nang yu jal la chimere Ami Ben Suda bo nyu chimune wadara. Yes, um, uh, Mrs. Ben Suda. This is um, this most recent issue was in 2011. Miri most recent 2011, Lawan. And uh, Mrs. Ben Suda's issue was around December 2012. 
Mbiri Mrs. Ben Sudan ak tiweri December 2012. Mrs. Ben Sudan was engaged or contracted as a World Bank consultant to do a study on the land governance framework for the government of the Gambia as the beneficiary. Mungilon lige nak si digante mbiri World Bank ak mbiri ak nguri Gambia lo ajusti wal ni yose tu mbiri sufi. So as part of the assignment. Bokona nak echi lige yoyu. Our office A A B and Co. Lige buntu lige kaya mna A A B and Co. Went to the registry. New dem nak si registry bi. Asking for data or information about land land matters, how long it takes, and that sort of information. La te te men ay batakel lo aju chimbiri su file na kala de muje agi nen yu temel. Number of cases, how long it takes to finish, and the backlog. Kitamen kisi nintia galante ak nakala de jel bem jer. Because the that consultant was supposed to look at the entire land governance. Dimbir mo akam nini depon ak dimbiri say tu yep system and provide um, solutions. So, um, uh, well, um, uh, when the request was made informally, uh, uh, was made informally uh, the uh, acting, uh, well, uh, there was a request that it should be made in writing. was a request that it should be made in writing. So, um, the office of Ms. Bensuda in the office of Ms. Bensuda in the office of Ms. Bensuda in the office of the to the judiciary. Ovisi ami bensu na jasi onlo dal di bindi na si judiciary bi. I'm asking for that information. Put light na bata kelio yu. At the time, the acting chief justice was Justice Wu. Jamano bo na kinga kamne ni molo ni yahantu si chief ne chief justice amo e Justice Wu. Also from Nigeria. Joge ko revi Nigeria. Only from Justice Wu to use the request to file a complaint against Mrs. Bensula. Si jamano bo na kumbimgi sa ilsakutev go rek sila dali ibind abtawat si ko Mrs Ben Suda with the National Intelligence Agency NIA ak NIA and she was accused of engaging in activities that undermined administration justice. Te new two mal ko na dal mungi don dugal lo ham si lo ham nini dana sufu dohalini lua ak ate. And Mrs Ben Suda was detained. Mrs. Ben Sudan in Japan ko for three days. Te ko ben na palas ben yetifan at the police headquarters. Chi police headquarters bi? I recall a number of lawyers. Mange fatelo ko ay lawyer yo kamneni. Seniors, juniors. Ay mag ay indaw. Including my humble self. Man si sumabo pa sa? Visited Mrs. Ben Suda. Nindal leo na yudef ang ganja Mrs. Ben Suda. In she was kept in the conference room of the of the police headquarters. You go there on the conference room in police headquarters, be. And at the time, I think the current minister of interior, minister of interior, was the IGP of police. Eh, che jamano bo kinga hamne ni mo interior minister bi jamano jinya kini jamano bo mo ne kon inspector general bo police. And I must say, he gave us access. To Mrs. Bensuda. Mujoh ni nayon pun yuki santek Mrs. Bensuda. And um, and then um, so many of us, many of the lawyers were sort of going back and forth. Lawyer, you bari nyu don dema kenyo. But what was very clear was that the they were waiting for instructions as to how to proceed with her. Wa lilia na mo nyu don kan digal pun nakala nyu continue aferam. Um, she was in charge, to my knowledge. The first two days, she was held in communicado. And um, I I have a report here from Amnesty International. Mangi am report bujuge kosi Amnesty International. Dated 21st December. You been the konyar fuki fanak ben si very December. That actually captured and reported what happened. Lo hamne wone na linga hamne ni mokhel. I would happily share it with Council. Chikolo na dina ako Jorge Council. Thank you very much. And and it's in the report states the report is dated twenty first December twenty 
2012. And uh, in paragraph uh, 6 of the report, the incident involving uh, Ami Ben Souda was reported. It, here it stated that it occurred, um, it happened on the 3rd December. And you did mention earlier in your statement that uh, it was in 2012. And according to the report, she was not informed of the reason for her arrest throughout her detention. And the report, uh, the, uh, she was arrested following a complaint by the acting CJ. Uh, as you rightly mentioned. And Chief Justice So even to request for information from the judiciary with respect to data was also seen as a, a serious issue. Indeed. Um, I mean, it's ironic because this information is helpful the judiciary helpful to the country. The whole idea is to help reform our land governance um, framework. And um, as you know, most of the cases in the courts are land matters. So this is one of the object, one of the deliverables of this project. Hello, I just see project bo mungi jamchi wali kodi linga hamne luchi opurek mo ene kumbiri suf. But obviously, um, the acting CJ had um, a sinister plan and just used this as, this as, an, as an opportunity. Because nobody, yeah, Jami didn't ask her, Aris Ami Ben Suda. Yeah, Jami, I can't ask you to ask Ami Ben Suda. He wanted to please Yaya Jami. So he saw an opportunity he thought would please Yaya Jami. Dalde for one day, he wanted to please Yaya Jami. Dalde for one day, he wanted to please Yaya Basically, because... Ms. Ben Suda came to the to the to the his, her office requested for information. They wrote she, this acting CJ, acting Chief Justice, writes a letter of complaint claiming that this is this would undermine the country and is prejudicial to the country, to the NIA, which is under the office of the president. So, so, so this was a system that was created that also allowed a lot of enablers to act in a way they believe would please the Mansa. And and of given that the, uh, the ex-president himself, I mean, how he saw the bar, any opportunity. Uh, he, before the muzzle the bar. More for the weekend the bar. And for the intimidate the lawyers. He would take it. So here we are, uh, Ms. Ben Suda, a reputable, fine, legal, I mean, I mean, lumin luminary, doing great work for the World Bank. Uh, the benefit of the country uh, is the detained. A lawyer, bo, hamne ni lawyer bunyu burani ekula. The Mrs. Ben Suda don legal World Bank for njeri njeri omi. On ridiculous and concocted um, uh, information. Or misinformation rather. But I help bo hamne ni den kote dafararek. By a ch acting Chief Justice. The co in acting Chief Justice. In, uh, in complicit with the in NIA. And the police. At police. And um, it, thanks, to the international, thanks to the intervention of eminent international persons. Uh, uh, the World Bank. The World Bank. We. And and other um, uh, well um, in meaning intention Gambians. He was released. But otherwise, I mean, they would have tried to charge her. 
Why not? So do not the name of the tech I too, And uh, funny enough, the, right. apparently the police are informed by Ms. Bensou that the police actually recommended for her prosecution. Uh, uh, the uh, the police uh, the report that was prepared and sent. Uh, the executive. Uh, she should be prosecuted. So the system, uh, a system was created wherein people reported each other in order to gain favors from the president. Yes. president and the judiciary was no exception to this system. It was, it was part and parcel of the equation. The judiciary was feeding from the hand of President Jame. The, the judiciary Jame. was controlled by President Jame through different um, attorney generals, different chief justices. Uh, uh, judiciary bina uh, president jamme da flon don tek loxo bu baax jaarale ko ci ay chief justice yu uti ak ay attorney general yo xamne duñ ben was this control that you referring to mir mi nga wax ni was is was it obtained by force ndax niñ ko daan amé daf ko daan amé ci force or was it that it was Willing, willingly given by those that occupied uh, those positions. It is certainly not by force. Uh, um, first, let me clarify. I mean, it was not every member of the judiciary who um, towed the line. There have been, we have we've had distinct, we have um, Nigerian judges served with distinction who were, who were independent and these were um, mainly commonwealth judges and all the judges who came on technical assistance the likes of belgore the likes of yahia uh, is, belgore is yahia is and of course monahan from botswana uh, monahan botswana and they consistently have shown independence uh, their rulings. Uh, but the advent of Justice Emmanuel Ajim uh, was a game changer. Uh, Emmanuel Ajim came, Emmanuel to, Ajim came to the country I believe as a DPP. Uh, DPP. You know better than I do because you, you worked in the state and um, on technical assistance. I mean, he was a very clever and shrewd man. So whilst as DPP, he forged a very strong relationship with uh, the um, security, um, I mean, personnel, police, NIA. He was very close with them. He had Can rapid... you help us uh, with the time frame when he became a... Uh when he came in as DPP. Oh, sorry, I think you might be in a better position to do that. Cause I, I was not there at uh, that time. Uh, I wasn't called uh, yet. I cannot remember the, I, the... In terms of timelines, I'm sorry, I'm not very good with these kind of details. You have to excuse me for that. So um, I can't remember what time it was exactly. Um, I, 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 frankly, I cannot... It's difficult for me to give you the exact timeline. Council is just assisting me here. She said maybe around 2002 and thereabout. Possibly, possibly, yeah, yeah. And um, because because I uh, wo, 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 just as Wawo came during Wawo's time, I, I think I mean Ajim left around 2012. If I'm correct, because wo, in 2012, I mean uh, Wawo was acting as as CJ. Uh, 2012. And at the time, Ajim was the substantive holder of the office, if I'm correct. So, I mean, you, I don't want to sort of make a mistake, but I think we can, the records can um, speak to this. But um, the genesis, I just, I just want to give you a genesis from my own analysis of, of it. From, Ajim came from um, 
uh, from the from being a prosecutor, in, a state prosecutor, on TA, and I was appointed uh, a, a high court judge, I believe, and then somehow subsequently he, I think he went to the court of appeal, and then became CJ in rapid time and speed. And uh, he, and he was able to mastermind, and he was the godfather who controlled the judiciary, that is those who he could control, and those who, could, who he couldn't control, he engineered their exit or marginalized them. He, he also had control over the Attorney General's office. They were like his protégés. They were people that worked under him. The Attorney General, I mean, Mama Singhati, worked under him. So they were like Ajib's um, sort of protégés. You so referred I, to him as uh, the godfather. He was, That's he the, was the godfather. He was the godfather. I, I hope the judiciary, when they are given a chance, would, would have a sincere disclosure of what happened. It's very important to hear it from the, from the horse's mouth, if I could put it that way. But from where we are as, as, um, as the bar, it was very obvious for anyone to see that Ajim was behind, was the invisible hand that controlled everything. And he was very clever with it. And you, it's even hard to find his, I mean, handprints, if I can call it that. So he used his relationship with the police and the NIA and to make sure that, I mean, that this, this machine, machinery, the Jami machinery was well oiled and taken care of. So Jami had a lot of confidence in Ajib. Can you tell us, um, uh, by citing examples of uh, how Ajim assisted in entrenching uh, Jamis control and rule in the Gambia. Nah, dengan mana wah, jadi yang anam la ajim suka nak uon, bila mana dolar, lengah mana mai kadu jam meyo, jadi buntut ada bila kita berium. Let me give an example. Um, in as in as much as the bar was not as effective as it should have been in terms of um, taking on the regime. Majah lah fikir benda misalnya, kom sekian ni kiri babi ni kau sentuh untuk hewan nuna. Jami was determined to really weaken or destroy the bar. Jami nak amun ini nak pur dal di nasah lo babi. Because he always felt that that's the last bastion that um, that would actually stand against him. So he's, yeah. con he's conquered everyone except the bar, but he minimized the effect, the impact of the bar. That's why it stopped. Dah dah dia orang dia kata ni bar berak mana kon lawak ni ni dah nama mana gunung katal dah zaman tu jojo dah dia nasi kal nyep bemdes bar bi. Why nak oi oi wany wany orang nasi dole buba. And one of the way, in fact, the the. Uh, it was Ajim who masterminded Ajim uh, the uh, introduction of what is quote unquote referred to here as the rival bar. Ti linga kamne ni moi ba benen binga kamne ni den koso son rek ak benen botai pour dal di dinga ba bele. And and this is well documented. Li nak nekana lo kamne ni lunwe la la. And the purpose of the rival bar basically was to weaken the main bar, yes. the parent body, that's the Gambia Bar Association. This was the scheme. A law school was created, which is a good thing. And this school was controlled by Ajim. The idea is to produce, to overproduce lawyers. And then create a, a, a bar association. And with time, those lawyers would obviously be aligned with that bar association, that, that, law, that law society or what would you, whatever you want to call it. And dilute the Gambia Bar Association, even in terms of numbers. And then in fact, uh, I believe uh, my colleague uh, L.K. Mboj testified 
here in this commission. Uh, and, claim, and claim that he, uh, he formed the Law Society because he was upset with the Bar Association for not helping him. And that we were used by Jame to petition against him. Was that the case? Uh, with all due respect, far from it. I would like to give you a letter. In fact, I would like to read the letter first. letter uh, the letter is dated 25th of August 2015. August 2015. It has a letterhead, Lamin Kebamboj. Mari Bantang Chambers. Mari Bantang Chambers. Number 46 Kerba Avenue. Uh, number 46 Kerba Avenue. Lions Plaza. Lion Plaza. First floor. First floor. His telephone numbers. Telephone number Aminak. And email addresses. Uh, email address. Um. Address to the president of the Gambia Bar Association. You bin the kona mudemchi president of Gambia Bar Association be. Dated 25th August 2015. You bin the kona yarfu kifan agjurom chivere August 2015. Salutation. Chino uh, yoga. Dear colleagues. Mu ne mule na nyom naule mi. Caption. The caption is apology letter. After years of serious consideration, uh, I have advised myself to uh, write this apology letter for the purpose of clearing all doubts uh, Creating an atmosphere of understanding and mutual respect. I have never, will never insult, demean, uh, disrespect my colleagues, as I am not that type of character. I have been an active member. Uh, I want to maintain my relationship with all my colleagues. Uh, but due to circumstances beyond my control, and acting in self-defense, uh, I was compelled to make those publications to save myself from incarceration. I spoke to Mr. Sheriff Tambedu. And Mr. Sheriff Tambedu. And Ms. Sengor. And Ms. Sengor. And explained myself to convey my deepest apologies to all my colleagues at the bar. But it seems that is not enough. The reasons for these publications are uh, colon. Number one. I received a call after 11 p.m. from the then Solicitor General. Uh, Solicitor General Pahari, Pahari. That I should make this press release. Ne press release bi, in order to foil the strike organized by the Bar Association. Point two. I refused initially. But I was compelled to do otherwise. Otherwise, I'll go to jail. In courts. That's what's on this letter. The compromise was to withdraw the pending criminal prosecution. Point three. Solicitor General himself. Solicitor General That is Pahari Jame. Pahari Jame. Call me around 11:30. No, call the call the then managing director observer. Uh, to 
give him a telephone interview eh pour dal diko jox nak telephone interview bo xamne dana ko am ak mom the next day it was on the headlines of the observer ci elex nak mu nek nak li nga xamne mo gëna fess ci xibaar yi observer bi that's why only the observer made the first publication eh lool moy ñel ben bi nga xamne ni observer def nañ yebane bu the subsequent publications eh li nga xamne mo top nak ci yebane bu I received a document in writing bearing my name as uh, the author. Jeldina bindina jeldina ab letter bo xamne jotna ko mu mu ñu ci def suma tour when I was not. Ne man ma ko bindon te te du man. I received the document from a colleague from the then chief justice. Ah jeldina letter bi na ci suma ben xari bo xamne mu ngi nekke ci chief justice bi fofu. Reply to the reaction of the bar. Eh pour nak ci tontu li nga xamne mu ngi jëm ci bar bi. The language is so strong that I wanted to edit it. Uh, la cadeau yi nak nek na cadeau yo xamne ni lu digeralate bugu nako segat but i was told not to do so way nak dañ ma wax ne dal bumako segat i was so angry uh, dama meron lol nak that i did not even read the body of the document and i just ne janguma sax li nga xamne mom la letter bi ombu and i just distributed it to the press eh uh, ci la ko jël rek dal diko agalé ci buntu te sekay xibaar yi it was only after that publication eh uh, gannaaw nak yebane boobu nonu nak that i knew it was intended for two of our colleagues who were having differences with the then chief justice eh li nak dañ ko jimalon rek ci suñ ñaari nawla yo xamne ni ñu ngi amone fewolo ak chief justice bi mr dabo and mrs a bensuda muy mr dabo ak mrs a bensuda i have learned from experience eh dal na jange nak ci lima gis that when you have a problem ne tay bo amé ay jafé jafé some will support you and dana am ño xamne dañ and ak yow and others will against you ak ñeneen ño xamne day na dingat i have great respect for my colleagues am naan ak cer bu baax ak yelef bu yaatu suma na morom yi no one i never intended to insult or annoy anyone te te memo suma am ina pour xass ken wala merlo ken the registration uh, bindu gi of the new bar ci uh, bind ak babu s emanated mu ngi faxe ko ci the then chief, chief justice nga xamne mo nekkon chief justice bi who gave the instructions mom bi nga xamne mo joxe won digal li and he said on the advice from above him te te men ci digal lo xamne mu ngi mu ngi joge ko ci luko wessu i hope that this letter is sufficient explanation for the past letter bi nak nek na lo xamne ni doyna pour leral li nga xamne mom lañu jox gannaaw which is deeply regretted nga xamne ni reccu nañ koy te men as it was not enough to save me from the continuation of the proceedings leading to my conviction eh te nak nekuton sax lo xamne ni mujje won na sowe ma ci continuer gi nga xamne ñu ko doon continuer pour atema i want to convey this apology ma ngi buga agalé nak jigalu gi the rest of my colleagues ci ñi nga xamne ni ño dess ci sumay nawlé know that ñu xamne i have not mosuma and will never insult my colleagues te duma mosa xass sumay nawlé I was waiting for your reaction. Eh ci jamono bi nga xamé ma ngi xaar nak seen tontu. I remain. Ma des nak yours faithfully. Eh di ko xamné ni ko ajo gi yeen ci terangala signed signé ko nak di Lamin Lamin K K Moch Moch legal practitioner. Eh di ko xamné mu ngi yaxantu ci mbiri lawyer. This uh, letter letter B from uh, Mr. Lamin Kembuch ayé ko ci Lamin Kembuch from the for its contents ci li nga xamné mom la letter bi umba emphasize your point de general na sa gis gis on the executive wanting to weaken ne the bar ne ñi nga xamné ñoy president bi lañ bëgg na saxal loyé and in so doing a colleague of yours was used to establish as a different bar association te pour ñu mëna am lolu nak dañ jël keneen ci ñi nga xamné say ay na tanguleñ pour taxawal ko mom mu taxawal benen botay lawyer can you uh, kindly give us a context uh, into the establishment uh, of this association the the, uh, the sister association li ñu mëna wax nak ci anam yi nga xamné non lañ sosé benen botay bi nga xamné ay botay loya lañ in your testimony you mentioned a planned protest ci sa sé da wax nga fi 
But the Gambia bus station had planned to host. Um, uh, frankly, I, I, with respect, um, I don't want to belabor the point. Um, for the simple fact that the letter, letter and other documents which I have provided to you, on the face of it, speaks to the truth as to why, as to our role as a Gambia, as a Gambia Bar Association. Number one, uh, the reason I brought this letter, right. within the context of your question, was to show how a chief justice, mm. and I'm chief justice, a foreign chief justice, a foreigner. The We have given so much. Comes to our country. Uh, Manage to infiltrate our, the sons and daughters of our profession. Uh, to divide us. For the benefit of one person. Uh, and of course, for his benefit, because he enjoyed the patronage. He came here as a measly DPP. Uh, and left here as a chief justice. Uh, and, and I believe the job he has today is because of that. To I think he's at the Supreme Court of Nigeria. He did that on the back of Gambians. He did that on the back of Gambians. Fact, prominent lawyers like Femi Falana and others protested when he was being appointed in Nigeria because they knew uh, the damage he has done in this country. So my point is, uh, I mean, he was very crafty. He used, I mean, on for, uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Mbouj, who I have respect for. In fact, we have very good relationship. When I was called, when I was elected as bar president, the first person I called when I left the hall was Mr. Mboj. To inform him that um, yep. as, as legal practitioners, we should, we, should, we, should, we should speak and come together as one family. And we continue to enjoy a very healthy and I mean, and I mean a very good relationship up to today. Unfortunately, he found himself in a situation where he was convicted by a court of law. Both the magistrate and I think the High Court upheld. Uh, at the time, I was a member of the executive. I was under the presidency of Lumna Farage. Lumna Farage. So at the time, we. Jami was trying to get the lawyers. And we knew that if we did not take steps, to ensure that lawyers are accountable. State House will do it. State House will do it. For that reason, when we, uh, because of uh, following the conviction of my learned friend, Doctor Najapaksuma we we we, rec we um, petitioned the G GLC. Bring it to their attention. As required by law. We are duty bound by law. By the Legal Practitioners Act. To report this to the GLC. 
And he was not the only one that was reported. There were three other lawyers who were reported. I believe I have given you the copy of that petition. And the Kindly check in your records. I only have um, some of the reports and some other documents that I've already admitted. I, I, I can. Um I can. I can avail you the. I, I, can, I have a. I have a, a petition dated 12 August, by the, address to the Chief Justice as Chair of the General Legal Council, pursuant to Section 26 of the Legal Practitioners Act. And I also have a response, from the General Legal Council, acknowledging receipt of the pe petition. And this was a petition against um, several uh, yes. legal practitioners yes. that were found wanting one way or the other yeah. against the code of conduct. Yes, and and this was the f like that, uh, this was the because we got information that Jame is about to clamp down on lawyers <laughs> in, 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 a, in a big way. And. Um, and that there was, and at the time, there was also a lot of legitimate complaints against lawyers. And these complaints were being sent to NIA, police, state house. And even at that point in time, I recall that there was even uh, at the instance of the executive, there was a there was a notice published in the newspaper. The Jamano was. I'm not looking. You can see newspaper view. Anybody who has a complaint against a lawyer can send it to State House or the NIA. I remember there was that publication. Unfortunately, I don't have the copy. And as an executive, we felt that we have to change the way we um, regulate lawyers. And, and we felt that we should not protect lawyers who break the law. Or or of a code of conduct. So that's when we actually started taking um, professional ethics very seriously at that time. And that was the time we also intensified the participation of the bar at the GLC. General Legal Council. Because General Legal Council is vested with the power to regulate um, legal practice in the Gambia, not the bar. And what is the composition of the General Legal Council? Um, uh, well, uh, 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 it, it, it is chaired by the Chief Justice. Uh, Chief Justice. Chief Justice. The deputy chair is attorney general. Uh, deputy chair, attorney general. Then uh, you have uh, uh, you have well, it, it, over time it changed. Then you have members representing of the Gambia Bar. I mean, of the Gambia Bar Association. And then you have uh, someone um, nominated by the president, I believe. Then you have a, a high court, a high court judge. Yeah. But at the time, um, during our, our, during it was during our ex executive that in the beginning we had good. With, well, we started have enjoying some kind of uh, like a tour in the sort of Cold War because the, our, on our president is the first, the first bar president to meet President Jame. Not the executive. Our president Lumna Farage was able to meet Jame during our. Uh, tenure. Before that, it was a it was an impasse. So, 
in, in our executive, we were, we were like sort of more, I would say, tactful and diplomatic because we, we had a group, like Lumla and I were sort of the more diplomatic group, and then we had Aziz Ben Suda and Yasin who were like, you know, sort of the warriors. So we always had this sort of trying to balance this out. So during the Lumla's tenure, you know, there was, a, there was an opening to discuss, to rebuild the relationship, and we really made efforts to do this. In fact, we uh, sponsored the redrafting of the GLC. I think we engaged Chernobyl Marina to draft GLC that, that allowed the bar to participate in the GLC together with, with, the, with, the, with the executive. And, and it, it worked very well until, until we, we had an issue, I don't remember what it was, with the, within the GLC. We didn't agree with the AG, AG at the time. And As in the General Legal Council. Council, yes, the General Legal Council. And then our membership was reduced from four to one by the AG. And suddenly, that's when we were diluted, and then that's when uh, they started changing um, the, the law to open the door for another law society. It was all part of the scheme of, when, they, when, when we were talking to them, they thought they could control us. But when they realized that, in as much as we, we, we were highly changing our strategy, to be able to engage the executive. They mistook, mistook that for control, and when they couldn't have it, they started, I mean, sort of retracting and started getting difficult and tough. And then that's when they changed the, I mean, the, I mean, the, L, the LPA. That's why you have 2015, 2016, 2017 LPA. So, so you can see all those amendments. So they amended the act to reduce our membership from four to one, so that we are, we are basically outnumbered. But today we are back to four under the current um, system. And that was all jet was weakening, weakening the bar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, yes, yeah, so, uh, so basically, in the process, um, uh, in the process, the president, Lumna, had to, had, at some point, had to resign. This was in 2016. It was it was a very um, tough year. So Lumna, I think, resigned. I was vice president, so I had to serve the rest of her term. I was supposed to finish her term. I didn't finish it. And I also had to resign. Because at the time, uh, my, um, there was this famous um, the GNPC case, they call it. Uh, I think nine, nine, um, um, uh, nine, the board of GNPC and my brother, who happens to be a director of the Ministry of Finance, were all charged and taken, charged with economic crime. My older brother. And um, taken to mile two. I will want to discuss uh, the GNPC case later on. For now, I'd like to take you back uh, to Justice Agim's tenure as Chief Justice. Can you tell us some of the excesses uh, that prevailed during his tenure as uh, Chief Justice? Um, I mean, I, I think um, in terms of um, Getting rid of Gambian judges. I think more judges got sacked under the watch of Ajim. I think Hadi Rush, I think Munkarek Kumba Kamara. Kumba Kamara. I think Alma Mittal. Alma Mittal. I think even Justice Mbai at some point. Justice Mbai, that's the end of So basically, um, he wanted to purge the the judiciary uh, of persons he didn't feel were aligned to or amenable to being controlled by him. Uh, and um, and um, basically had his way. He, anybody he didn't like, he'll be fired. 
I like to read a paragraph 30 of your statement. You said something really interesting about the period uh, wherein uh, Justice Ajim was CJ. You stated the era of Ajim was the beginning of the darkest period in terms of erosion of the judicial independence. And that of the office of the Attorney General, who was essentially his prodigy. The lines between the Attorney General's chambers and the judiciary were essentially blurred during the Ajim time. They worked together to ensure the desired outcome were obtained in cases. In cases that the state in court had interest in. And you cited the code word for Jame's interest. You said, in fact, Jame was the state. This was confirmed when a group of parliamentarians and chiefs went around the country campaigning for Jame to be made leader for life. There was also a match called No More Elections, all in the name of Babili Mansa. And this was in the era of Ajim R.C.J. You talked about um, the judiciary being in cohorts with the Attorney General's chambers to achieve um, the desired outcome for state-interested cases. Can you kindly shed light on that? I mean, I think um, the the judiciary will, be, will, be, will actually be a better place to give more tangible examples because there are judges who have been I mean, given instructions directly. Um, I mean, I don't want to, I mean, for example, the state councils who were I mean, at the Attorney General's chambers, uh, we know exactly what was happening. Uh, State Council in the Attorney General's chambers, we know what was And um, I think, uh, in terms of giving concrete examples, they are much better placed to give concrete examples. Because we, you have to remember, we as lawyers, we were not directly privy. Whatever I, I say in the regard would be hearsay. And uh, apart, apart from what is reported to us. And that's because we are not privy. And he started going out to Nigeria recruiting his own judges. I, I, I think that's when the term mercenary judges started being used. And, and these judges were really of, of low caliber, uncouth, and really not even fit to be magistrates. And they Coming to Gambia was a huge upgrade for them. So that patronage he used to hire judges 
and then use the judicial as an as an instrument of the executive jojo yi nak sen ñew fi nak nek na lo xamne lu reey lawon ci ñom ndax momi tera nga gem am bay mëna jëm jëli ay joj di leen indi fi and then he he treated our gambian judges particularly those who are independent with contempt te tamé nak daf tan xép lool suñ ge joj yi abdou karim savage abdou karim savage ye mais so rest in peace and akoy allah yerem when when he was sacked bin ko jamono bin ko daqé he was handing over to ajim té tamé nak mu ngi don joxé nak lengay ajim they had paramilitary people amon nañ ay paramilitary fa nek nia nia not only that du lo rek dé machinated charges against him et dañ jël ay touma tek ko ci kom with the dignity of the office they charge him at banyu magistrate court euh ci teranga office bo ak dara je joju dañ ko charge ci banyu magistrate court luckily um, it was averted it, it didn't continue euh ci liko may san sax continue wuñ ko and um, i i recall having a conversation euh man na fatale ko waxtan wo xamne ni amon na ko with a particular inspector general police I will write his name. Ben Inspector General of Police, the Nabin de Turam, was uh, called the best IGP in the Gambia by the president at the time. Ko hamne ni nak mom president wah na ni mo IGP. You gena ba ti Gambia. Remember this day, I, I I was at I I came from Parliament. The uh, late uh, Momo Njai, former Speaker. Ken he was speaking late Njai. before Parliament. Bin kote gena ti kanam Parliament bi ti de Jambi. I was walking back cuz I had I knew the this IGP very yeah. well. I knew him when he was a station officer. Eh ci la ko xam depuis bi mo nek station officer. And he told me Sal. Eh ci la ma wax nak Sal. Uh this your CJ. Eh Saint Chief Justice B. He's too soft. Eh dal nek na ko oyof lol. He's not doing the job. Eh nek ko di def ligeyam. And that I have been there to tell him several times that he has to behave himself otherwise he will kick him out. Eh te dag na di ko wax su ko defu te dañ ko genni. So I told him you actually IGP went to see so he said yes. So IGP dem nga ci mom sa di wowo mu ne wowo I told the president to bring Ajim back and to replace him eh ci la wax sa ne wax na president mu indi wat Ajim pour remplacer ko and that's exactly what happened te lolu nak mo xew am on oath ma ngi wat i swore to the quran ma ngi wat ci alquran bi actually happened eh ah te lolu mo xew nobody told me this particular IGP li ken wax nako IGP bi momo ko wax incidentally is back in the force today eh te be tay na mu ngi ci force bi tay was even part of that not not election campaign not election match he was part of it te mu ngi nekkon nak ci election bobu nonu campaign bobu ñu de wax ni da amatu wara ñoo def election serving in our police force de aji bo mu ngi liggey ci suñu police force bi and this incident is respect with respect to uh, justice uh, abu karim savage and take it further bi mu ngi am ci mbiri abu karim sengo take it further um we wanted to we i mean it is customary that i mean when when just savage passed away ganaw bi justice savage gagno it is customary for the judiciary to have a valedictory ceremony nga du dana don nek na ada nak pour judiciary bi amon lu jëm ci walé xew dej bobu justice ajim was not interested in that té justice ajim dal a jow ton ko so we had to do it as a bar association té kon ñun ni ngi ko mujjé won def rek moy comme and it's bar association botay lo yag so we held uh, we did our best to hold a fitting valedictory for justice savage in court number 1 ya ci lañ def nak xew xew bobu ci court number 1 and meanwhile when even one of the when the nigerian judges ikpala and amadi were leaving jamono bi amadi ak ikpala don ñibi they died they were just leaving back to nigeria ñom deewuñ de te dañ don dem ñibi rek nigeria Ajim organized a very fitting valedictory for them. Eh te Ajim na oté won nak ben xew xew bure pour ñom. I remember uh uh my colleague um Mama Singate. Eh fatale ko na suma ben nawle Mama Singate was attorney general at the time. She was very embarrassed by the situation. Eh nga xamné ni mo nekkon attorney general jamono bobu mo na gatché lol ci mbir mom. She begs she says sal this we cannot allow this at least let the ages office have a role in it. Eh ci la wax né li da muñ ko ci dan nañ am wall ci li because we were actually going to have it in a hotel ndax ñu ko warona defé ci hotel he okay we can have it in court number 1 ñu ko defé ci court number 1 and you can participate eh tay tay mom nga ci bok i mean this is just 
so, I mean, an example of, I mean, how in our own country, yeah. we are second class citizens, even as lawyers. And the first class citizens are lawyers. The Ajim era. The Ajim era. The Ajim era. And um, you also mentioned that um, Justice Savage, as he then was, uh, was charged before the magistrate court and the charges did not uh, proceed. Yes. Can you recall what he was charged uh, with? I think, I think it was in connection with, um, there were some official judicial staff who were, who were being investigated and charged with um, alleged, alleged appropriation of funds in the sheriff's department, I believe. And, and he was, it was, it was supposedly under his watch. Notwithstanding the fact that he is not an accounting officer, because the JS is the accounting officer. But I mean, he was being sort of lumped together with, I mean, uh, people from the sheriff's department. Uh, I believe the intervention of Antuman Gay is what was what saved the day. Uh, At the court. I think it's very important that this TRRC speak to Antuman Gay. Uh, very um, experience that I think would really help. Uh, I know he's uh, he was reluctant, but I, I have to say this. Uh, is, uh, Mr. Gay, um, talks to the TRC. He has a lot to say. He witnesses a lot. Yeah, uh, a lot. Mr. Gay, what lawyer? Thank you very much for that. Um, the state also used other means to violate the rights of its citizens and also to silence. Uh, its opponents, which included lawyers. And that is um, one of which is the use of the law to persecute its opponents. What can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, the like I said, um, the, the legal framework was instrumentalized to satisfy the objectives of Jave. So you have, for example, the economic, I mean, economic crime decree, which maybe at the time it was drafted, uh, was purportedly to fight corruption. But it's, it's wide, it's, I mean, its net is so wide that literally anybody can be charged with economic crime. It's so easy to charge people with economic crime. It's so easy, and and um, for example, giving uh, false information, false information, or false publication. Uh, I mean, which Moses Richards uh, exactly. was charged for. Yeah. Yes, he was caught under that net as yes. well. Moses Richards in bar mo mulen kajape mo mtamen. You know, so all these um, repressive, some of them colonial laws were being used to prosecute. I remember somebody was charged for broadcasting a UDP rally on Skype. I think, I believe Nene Cham was the person's lawyer. Yeah, simple as that. You could have a FaceTime or a Skype of information. And if the information happens to be untrue, you can be charged. And by the way, that is still in our books. Up to today. Wow, then Colonel Jelena, while he barred Bunek and the ghoul, Munanga, take Tuma, Los Hanunco and Bele, which is in Terry. So, so they, they always find ways of trying to, I mean, if, if they believe an individual is, could be a problem or doesn't agree with them or for, or for whatever malicious reason, they could always use the law to charge you. I mean, they, there's always a way. And they, they had, they, they had lawyers prosecutors 
who will find a way of doing it. And what they will do, for example, they will charge you with an offense that will not stick in the court of law. They will take you to the magistrate court first, knowing that the magistrate court doesn't have jurisdiction, and then you'll be remanded, right? You'll be remanded. Because the magistrate will say, court, say well, I don't, we will decline jurisdiction, we will not entertain your bail application. You are remanded. And the case file has to be transferred to the high court. And how long it takes is entirely in the hands of the police. So you could languish in mile two for one month, whilst administratively or otherwise, your file is being transported to the high court where you can apply bill. Just to make sure that you are in detention. And in such cases, justice delayed is obviously justice denied. It's a way of actually teaching you a lesson. So anybody they want to keep in Malta for one month, with the best of lawyers, they will keep you in Malta for one month. And actually that is still happening now. The status quo has not changed. The more things change, the more they remain the same. How about bail conditions? Um, during, I remember during the, uh, this GNPC case, bail, bail conditions were set. The, alle alle the allegation was 80, $18 million was lost, economic, economic loss caused by, that, um, by the accused persons. So the average bail condition was about $1.8 million. Dollars. And, and they actually, they said dollars, not dollars, they dollars. Dollars? Yes. When I, I will send you the, the, the processes, you'll see it for yourself. They were, my brother was one of the um, accused persons. So was, so was um, the, uh, Sira Walindau and Fafa uh, Sayang, Kormins of Energy, Cherno Marena, and others. And um, this was in 2016, 16, correct? 16. And yeah. this was one of the reasons uh, why you resigned as an executive member yes. of the Gambia Bar Association. Exactly. This was I, I tell you what really broke my heart. Uh, my older brother, Alajim Tal, Momodu Tal, who is uh, currently a deputy PS. Deputy PS. Minister of Finance. He ministry He deputized for his PS, attended a board meeting. Uh, went to Dubai. Uh, and that was his crime. So all the board, all those people, all those whose names are on the board minutes, uh, are on the board minutes yep. taken to mile two. Firstly, um, NIA and mile two. Minister mile two. PS. Minister PS. Board of directors. Board of directors. Secretary to the board. Uh, secretary Everybody to the board. And Jami came on TV and said that he will make sure that he will punish them. He will, he will lock them up. He said it. And I remember just to, so that's why, I'm sorry, we cannot always, Jami was a monster. But there are many Gambians who fed this monster. I remember when Jami was making this pronouncement. And he was saying that, the loss is $18 million, and I'm going to divide it between them. Um, elder, religious elder, can he kill for you? Did the calculation for him and said it is this much. He said, oh, and, and he laughed. Mr. Jamin laughed about it. He said, oh, you're a very good accountant. He said, how much is this? He said, $1.8 million or thereabouts. Can he kill for that? He said, I'll calculate it. This Jamin. So. Um, when um, and so this bill, these bail conditions were just impossible to meet. Very onerous, very onerous uh, conditions to meet. Condition uh, bail you in a million It was difficult to meet. And I remember um, uh, my brother. We used to communicate through. Cause there, were, there were good people in NIA. Honestly, there are good people who help you communicate. Uh, I'm not NIA. You buy not you don't just call phone you at 1 a.m. and to see my brother and bring him food and stuff like that. And one day he called me. He said, "Sir, I'm scared." 
They put him in a pickup. Then could you see Ben a pickup? Drove him to Janjambure. Yobu ko Janjambure. And just to scare him and brought him back the next day. Hey, Yobu ko where Janjambure? Put it all correct. Enu indu atko atis. That was the time that I I decided that I mean I have to do everything to also save my brother. Hey, chila wah nena manda wah nade vle pulu maman pur. And clearly being bar president, I mean at the point where we are on collision close with the government. Uh, chi jamano bo nga hamin nag. And there me with the executive, and I had to make that choice between family and country unfortunately at that time i took i, I actually did for my brother and um, this was the case also um that uh, the former solicitor general yes. Cherno marina testified about he was also yes. an accused person in this particular yes. case the Minister of Petroleum, the Permanent Secretary, Fafa Sajan, who is now the Minister of Petroleum. And I mean, Sidi uh, Kanye, who, who happens to be, he was working for Social Security, happens to attend a board meeting, was also, part, was also charged, arrested, and detained, and imprisoned. Like with respect to this case, everyone that attended everybody, the board meeting, I mean, you're, everybody, yep. regardless of whether you're involved in causing the loss or not, you were arrested. And that, is if, that is even if the loss is caused. caused uh, the uh, Most of the people didn't have the power to even to enter into a contract. Uh, they were just in a board. They are the GNPC board members. No, no board members you GNPC. Why do you think this case was initiated during that period? It was all about because there were certain, well, from the, for the information I, I have, I received. There was, there were people who wanted that petroleum deal to go to them. So they went to Jame and reported that the deal that was signed by GNPC was not the best deal. And that it will cost that it will cause Gambia this much losses. I told him that, that um, these your government people have been have been given bribes. In fact, it was the same Mohamed Bazi, for, for, for the record. Mohamed Bazi, who masterminded and orchestrated this. And we all know how much he was in bed with the president, as shown by the Jane Commission. So I believe the president, for whatever for reason best known to him, maybe yeah. because he maybe because he will gain from that deal or otherwise. He decided to torpedo the entire deal and then arrest everyone. I'm just speculating, of course. And what is bizarre is, um, so this case sort of continued up to the, the time the government, sort of the election was lost. So they were granted bail after the change of government. I remember the judge um, the saying that now that the wind of change is blowing. I, and uh, I turned to Mr. Gay. I said, Mr. Gay, did you hear that? He said, in light of the, blow, of the wind of change, um, I hereby grant you bail. And I could not believe it. The same set of facts, the same condition, same law, same judge, because of a change of, because Jamie had lost the election, he suddenly became a new human being. Uh, Before, in the middle of the case, he'll get up and, 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 and the prosecutor will tell us that they are waiting for clearance. They are talking to State House as to 
what to accept, what not to accept. I was there. I was in there as a clearance for a court proceeding. Like for to go that, on. Yeah, to put, exactly. They, they will say they will they will tell us. They will adjourn. We will stand by the corridor and for like one hour they come back. Uh, will, new talk. The hard it was, new I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, I saw this firsthand. Nobody told me this. I was there. Man for one. That's typical interference I mean, with it was the judicial not, process. It was not even, it was micromanagement. It was not interference. It was being managed, orchestrated, yeah. control, driven. Then could take on law. Nothing that the AG will do without clearance. So it was not about the law. For me, that was like, and you know, um, I wasn't surprised that Jamie lost the election. Because because you look at all those people there. Their diversity. These are Gambians who serve with distinction. Very distinguished families. From all tribes. You want to charge them at that point in time. The discussion we used to have on the corridor is. We didn't have hope in the legal process. We said, ah, Ninko Bible's election break. That was our discussion. Linda was saying that we will be. Yeah, because, because Gambians, you know, unfortunately, only care when they're actually directly affected. So at that point, there, was no, there, was, there wasn't anybody who wasn't affected by Jame. Jola, Maninka, Wolof, you name it. I'll just take you back. Before, before that case, in that, in that year, that was right before, the day before the day before Korite, he arrested all the permanent secretaries over um, vehicle sales. I don't know if you remember that. Every single permanent secretary was arrested in one swoop, every one of them. He came on TV and recounted that, that how he was talking to a young girl who asked that these are you should get for this footage. He said that uh, this young girl asked him to give him some money to buy a car. So he asked the girl uh, how much, and the, and the girl told him this car is going to cost let's say two hundred thousand or whatever two hundred. And he said the girl told him that it's a deal from these government vehicles. This is Jame himself explaining this. This is, this is, if you go to Jatez, it's there. No, okay, so he said, okay, and then the girl's like, you know, I have to give this money to the permanent secretary so that he will sell me this ex um, Tirano and the rest of it. He said, ah, okay. So then he ordered the rest of all the PSs and, and said that, oh, this vehicle sale should have given Jame 100 million, and now all these corrupt PSs are selling it for I don't know, 10 million. Arrested and detained all of them. Uh, men, yep. men, it don't, didn't matter. All of them. So what, when you look at all of that, that's, I think, when Gammon started saying that, Sun recognized that Jame is an existential threat for everyone. It's not about whether you're with this party or that party. Wow. Our survival as a people me, uh, were tested beyond limit. The first time I voted, in my life was 2016. I made sure I woke up at 5 in the morning. I called all my friends. Sure we have to make this vote count. And indeed, Gambia did decide. Mr. Chairman, I believe that this is a convenient point to stop. Then we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, Council and thank you, Mr. Tal. I have one or two small points to raise before we uh, call it a day and then come back um, tomorrow. <laughs> one of your commentaries was a very sad one for me, at least. And you were implying or saying uh, that uh, the deployment of Nigerian judiciary personnel, judges, DPPs, and uh, etc. In our justice sector, made them uh, 
you Gambians working with them, you felt like you were second citizens in your own country and in your own profession. How wide, widespread was this feeling? among Gambian lawyers. It was the, it, it was, it was, it was um, across the board. I mean, to the extent that if you had certain cases, um, and you want to win those cases, you have to engage certain lawyers. And mind you, this, it was not only Nigerian lawyers. Also, some Gambian lawyers were part of that crew. I recall um, Justice Wo's house, Kairaba Avenue. Avenue. That was like the center where you would see them meet. You would see the car of the CJ. Uh, like, like, they would go there and drink. You see the car of CJ. You see the car of Solicitor General. Like Solicitor General. You see the car of some Gambian lawyers. Like some high court Gambian judges. Lawyer, I, I high court openly, judges. it was next to uh, Hatib Jana's uh, place. I forgot the name again. Envy. Hatib Jana, Envy. If, uh, you would actually go there and you will see their cars like parked there. Like uh, for uh, a special prosecutor uh, in care from, at the time from Cameroon. You'll see uh, Bahari Jame's car there, you'll see Bahari some Otomi. lawyers' cars there, uh, yeah, some no. magistrates. All of them, they were, there was this clique. And, th and also Yankuba Baji was always there. Uh, Yankuba Baji Th this clique mean for? were running the show. And if you're not part of this clique, forget it. Uh, so, so uh, a lot of, I mean, so even sometimes, the case will go to the Chief Justice. He would recommend to you what lawyer to take. I mean, it was it was a mess. Uh, it's not we were we were relegated to second class in our own country. And in your own profession. In your own profession. Extraordinary. You didn't feel like um, I mean the analogy is not probably appropriate, that the pre-94 feeling like that um, among the military, the hearings that we heard at the beginning of our public hearings, the testimonies we heard uh, concerning the coup in 94 and the times of preceding that, soldiers came in here talking about almost exactly the same thing. Absolutely. And uh, if that motivated them to overthrow the constitutional system. Were you guys motivated to do anything? You at least not, the well, at least not to talk. overthrow the constitution. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, <coughs> for me personally, I, I, I hold dual nationality. And I, I had said myself that if this election goes to Jami, I will definitely re relocate. There's uh, no question about that. Uh, I, 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 and many uh, professions I know were saying they would relocate. And I had friends, Gambian friends, who were highly qualified, who would call me, and I'll, I mean, who could serve Gambia, and I'll beg them not to come to Gambia. These are Ivy League Gambians and other places who can, I'm like, don't ever think of coming to Gambia. And I felt that it was a mistake coming back to Gambia, for sure. So for me, and because, I mean, every day I wake up, I go to work, I felt I had no guarantee coming back to my house. You know, I used to joke that, um, my gardener uh, that I see every day riding on his bike, he had more freedom than me because he, nobody would arrest him. But for me, every day I leave my house, there's no guarantee I'll come back for one thing or another. That's how we lived every single day. Incredible. Commissioner, um, if you have any questions, you want to wait until tomorrow? No, we can do that. Uh, Go ahead, please. Imam Jal, um, Imam, Imam C. Mr. Saliutal. Uh, Mr. Saliutal. 
jerejof ci ci wok bi rafet na trop thank you very much for your testimony man de limay laj moy my correction is yen lawyer yi you the lawyers ñi nga xamantene lawyer gambia yi la gambian lawyers specially yen itam yen sen yen yop sen digantene lak mu ngi jubon mu ngi amon jub where you in cordial relationship ndax wala mu ngi amone ay xaj ñi tafu ci ya jamme ñi tafu wuñ ci mo or where you divided uh, with others with ya jamme sided with ya jamme and others continue with you xamna ne gan yi mom lu ko neg rek lañ doon def i know those from the outside uh, they are always with ya jamme man lu la bëgg na laaj that's what i want to ask um i i think ya karna ne There were some the major the 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 to honest, the majority of lawyers were indifferent. Yeah, lu bari na ci lawyer yi dal dañ uti won. I have to be honest about this. Yeah, li na fok ci rek ma djub ci in the sense that eh ci lo xamne ni as long as the they they earning their living ndigem ndak dal ñu ngi dundu they can turn a blind eye ya man nañu du moyu what is happening in our backyard. Eh ci lepp lo xamne moy am nak ci suñu gannaaw. There were some am na ñen ño xamné who were complicit ño xamné dal dal di yonañ ci and there was some am na ño xamné like the likes of antuman gay ñu melni ki antuman gay ben suda ben suda lamin kamara ak lamin kamara loya usinu dabo loya usinu dabo who bori touré wa bori touré and i don't i might miss some names who were Nene Cham of course Nene Cham who were I mean always fighting ah ño xamné ni toujours rek ñu ngi the good fight xex bi nga xamné moy xex bi gëna yewet i must confess i was not fighting the good fight because uh, i was a corporate lawyer eh dama dana wax ni dal duma lan xex ni wéré i was and i was not a litigator eh ne kuma nak ko xamné ni an but that's not an excuse why na lo du to dal lay in my comfort zone why na ma ngi won ci suma power bu dal I would do my duties as a <coughs> member of the executive, and whenever my family member is charged, I will come to and fight the case and go back to my corner. Ah. So, so we were we were we were not we were we were we were not we were not a very strong unit. Ne kunyo nag nyo hamne ni bota gudigirle. Lawyers who carried a lot of weight. Amone nyan lawyer yo hamne yo gadu nyep. Tired. 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 If you had a criminal case, eh bo amé case bo xamné mbiri tefar la, you will shop for lawyers. It's not easy. There are only three or four you can go to. Eh ñaar ñett rek ngay mëna demal ci ci jamono bo. Yes, so really I think yes we we were we were not we were not a cohesion strong unit. Eh ne ko ñon dal mbo ay go xamné ni And we had some of our members who were really complicit and we had some who were just on the fence. Ah amna ño xamné ni nak bokku ñu kenn bokku ñon fa rek. Um have been fighting am ño xamné tamen ñu ngi doon xéxal great things and those are people who inspired people like me di def yu bari 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 ñoy ñoy ñi nga xamné ñoo xéxal ñu melni ki man thank you very much and we will start our proceedings again tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock sharp thank you all meetings adjourned Gamtel G Fiber now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secure and accessible to homes, businesses and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. pastry bakery and quality food ck restaurant is the only place to be we do catering for birthdays weddings and all related services we have all kinds of local foods american european and even beyond
come and have a taste of our local juice, Ebe and other services. At CK Restaurant, customer satisfaction is our priority. Love 